Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3 and Episode number 323 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah! Oh, a little emphasis today. Haha, today recording day is Thursday, February 22nd, 2024, and it's going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. As you can hear, the voice still has bass today, and I am not going to complain because for the couple of days that it actually lasts, I sound way more manly. (laughs) And for the people who are listening, once again, (sighs) Luke, I am your father, (sighs) and I am Batman. There you go. <laughs> stealing, stealing my thunder, are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to use it while it lasts. No, oh, I know. I <laughs> fully appreciate and support it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning to all the kids who have joined us. Kit Toronto, Kit Lefty, Lance. Ooh, sexy beaver voice. Yeah. I'm, I bought it special. Kit Jen. <laughs> Hello, dear. Kit Elaine. Kit Mohan. Uh, let's see who else do we have on the chat. Kit PNC Bio, Kit Elaine, Kit Vim, and Kit Landan. Hello, dear. Kit James. Hello, my friend. Bonjour, PM Godin. Ça va bien, mon ami. Uh, who else do we have here? Kit Tavi G, of course. Hello, lovely. Kit Cassie. Hello, my dear. Lovely to see you. Kit Mr. Cal. Ah, uh, that's always a joy to have you join us. And do we have anybody else? Have I missed anyone? Have I missed anyone? Oh, bonjour, Christian. Salut, mon beau. And I think that's everyone today. Oh, Miss Shadika, there you go, present. I hope Mateo's doing better. And Kit Missy Savoy. Oh, hello. That's a new name for me, I think. I'm not sure if you're new to the Beaver Lodge, but if you are, welcome, welcome, welcome. Missy is a a dear friend of mine. Uh, We've known each other a very long time. I'm just going to put this little QR code. A friend? Yes, yeah. Put this QR code up on the screen there. If you are watching live and you want to join us on YouTube, if you scan that QR code, the one right next to my dome, you will be able to go directly to our YouTube uh, channel where you can join in the chat and watch us live, of course, as you are doing. But uh, if you get to join in the chat, you get to be a, a better part of the Big Damn Fam. Yeah, like yeah, big, exactly. Big Damn Fam. Yes, the big damn fam. The best damn fam in all the podcasting. Register there dream. You go. There you go. And uh, oh, and Kit Wishful popping in just in time to get the hellos. Hello. So lovely to see you all. Um, let's see. What do we have? Uh, I didn't finish the intro. Thank you, Ghost Star Podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a little something special for you today. Ooh, someone scanned the QR code. That's lovely. Yes. And before we do anything else, let's ask Mr. Grizzly how your mental health is doing today, sir. Well, sir, 
uh, I figured out why I was feeling a little off yesterday. It's because I forgot to take my brain medication. Ooh. <laughs> and it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before I forgot to take it. And then I forgot to take it again yesterday. And this morning, just before, you know, when we were in the green room, I'm like, oh, hang on, folks. I got I to gotta go and take some medication because uh, is you know, it's not good. It's not good when you miss it. Uh, now, it's, it's not like I'm crashing hard or anything, but I did feel different. I didn't feel like myself, so I knew that there was something. And I realized, oh, damn, got up, you know, and I'm, I'm a zombie in the morning. So when I got up and started to get ready, first thing, I, usually I get up, go to toilet, go to kitchen, take medication, make coffee or tea or whichever the case may be. And yesterday I just got up, went to toilet, came right here, sat down. I did that two days in a row. I sat down, started doing stuff, and then I just completely forgot to take my medication. Yeah. So it threw me off a little bit. I mean, I'm not depressed or anything like that, but I just wasn't feeling like myself, and that's why. So it'll probably be a couple of days for me to catch up and feel normal again. Okay. Well, I hope that goes very smoothly. Thank you. Uh, me too. We have a Mateo update. Oh. Uh, he slept for many hours last night from early evening until now, catching up on sleep. He has a really bad ear infection. Oh, no. Yeah, I've been there, done that. At ear yeah. infections are never fun. As no. a child, they're horrible. As an adult, it's like, oh, I remember that as a child. It takes you back to a childhood memory that you'd much rather forget. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're sending all the healing energy right through here, through the Beaver Lodge, right to you, Mateo, and family. Hope that everything uh, gets progressively better. Yes. Okay, uh, kids and cubs, there has been a lot in the news, and I know that you're probably expecting us to go to that, but today we're going to shift focus a little bit, because as you remember, we said a few weeks ago on the show that during this year we were going to have a special focus on New Brunswick, because there's an election coming up, and it's very important that this province be flipped, so we wanted to bring more information, and to that effect, we have with us our I'm just going to say our new correspondent. East Coast correspondent. East Coast correspondent that you have had a chance to meet once here on the show and once during the podcast. And uh, you've had a lot of love for her. You've made her feel very welcome. So uh, let's put our pause up and give a big round of applause for High Tide Hilda. Yay. Morning, uh, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Beaver Lodge. I guess the first the first few stays were to, weren't too bad. No, no, survived everything. Okay, good. We love return business. <laughs> yes, we do. Indeed. Uh, how's your mental health today, dear? Good, except we got horrible news. We're going to get a rainstorm on the weekend after mm. 47 <sighs> feet of snow. Now yeah. It's rain. So they're saying there could be flooding in a lot of areas because the ground is uh, frozen. And yeah, that's not good. Uh, well, flooding's not good at any time. Flooding in February, ugh. That's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. But it is what it is. Uh, oh, well, yeah. you know, we've, we've not been kind to Mother Nature the last, what, 300 years? No, <laughs> so, not at all. But I do have to say it's been a soft winter in the east. We haven't had a lot. It's been cold the last couple of days, but it's been a really, really mild winter. Yeah, for us too. Same here. I'm yeah. normally wild. Uh, mild, wild, well, wild too. Uh, we had this huge snowstorm the other day that dropped at least a foot of snow, and already I can see green on my lawn again. Yeah, yeah. it's just not sticking around. It's just yeah. All right, ah, and uh, Pim Gaudet says bon matin to Hilda from Caraquet. Hello. Yes, it's nice to have you here. Okay, um, before we get started, I just wanted to remember one person asked me a question yesterday in the chat because the. The Scotties is going on, and uh, Carling Canada, one of the te te Team Canada's lead, uh, Brienne, I can't remember her last name off the top of my head, uh, was deemed ineligible to play right before it started. And that's all Carling Canada said. That's all her team said. That's all anybody said. People have been asking the media, why, what's the reason? Nobody's saying anything. Curling Canada saying that's all we'll say on the subject, which makes it look real bad because everybody's wondering if it's drugs, if it's whatever, and nobody has anything. And people ask me for my thoughts because um, I'm a big curling fan. My only thought is that this is very, very poor communications. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very poor co 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 communications from Curling Canada. Have no idea whatsoever 
why it is, why she's deemed it. Is it a resident? It could be a residency thing. It could be, but she played on the team for the last four years. And they won the Scotties four years in a row. So there's something that has happened. And apparently nobody's entitled to know. I and wonder, do they have to pay dues every year? Was she late paying her entry fees? That's or? what I mean. We don't know. We just, we just heard she's deemed ineligible and that's it, which allows all the room for everybody to speculate and suspect the worst. And I can't imagine they wouldn't do drug testing at that level of curling. This is oh yeah, they do. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Because. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. these days now with all the pressure on the, on the ice with the, because before the rock, the, the rule used to be that you could only sweep the front of the rock, but now that you can do corner sweeping and directional sweeping. Yeah. Big time. The more pounds per square inch you can put on the ice, the better. Okay. Yep. I haven't curled for years. I don't know. Yeah. And again, right. I like Kit Michael says, who's also a curler on my team, actually. Hello friend. Um, yeah, maybe too personal to divulge, but yeah. you can give some context that it's you know some something personal, or you can, but not saying anything whatsoever. She's just ineligible, and that's it. Leaves yeah. way too much room for speculation, and you know there there have been hits to her reputation, and things being said, and things being implied, and it's just not I'm good. not sure what the better way to have handled it would have been, other than giving some general context because of a matter due related to something is deemed ineligible, but they've got no, no insight at all. So I do not know whatsoever. Shame yeah. For her and the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's going, I mean, Curling Canada is getting it, you know, she's getting it depending on, you know, who side people. And, and when you get a situation like this, you get blanks and people yeah. start filling in the blanks with what they wish, want, or need to be true for whatever narrative they want to spin rather than just saying, we don't know. Right. So, yeah. Um, but other good. than that, I don't, I don't have any more thoughts because, uh, yeah, Brianne Harris, thank you, of Team Einerson, who said, Einerson, who's Team Canada right now uh, at the Scotty. So I don't really have any other thoughts than this very poorly, poorly, poorly handled communications. I don't know if you'd have some insights into, you know, how you would do comms for something like this. No idea. Strange. Just yeah. Because normally you're given some type of general reason you know, general reason then you're saying, you know, in order to respect someone's privacy, we will not say, but even just to say in order to respect their privacy, we're not saying, but, but apparently they haven't even said that. So we don't even know if it's a matter of privacy. They've just said nothing. No, mm. that's a real shame for her. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully it will come out some, in some way after the Scotties, but yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to do that off the bat because I was asked and I didn't want to forget before the show was over. But now, to the focus of the show. I'm so excited. Um, there has been lots of happenings in New Brunswick. Uh, we've had stuff like, um, I think there were six, M uh, six MLAs who decided that they were not going to run again. Five, I think. Five, okay. Under the Higgs banner. Um, there was, a, I think, a minister who also decided that he was just quitting politics. Yep, that would okay. be my Collins. Mike Collins. And uh, tell us a little bit about him. Uh, he's... I have a really hard time describing politicians. I think he was... I shouldn't say was, because he's still there. Um, he's one of those people either really liked him or really didn't like him. And I'm sure that they both have, have their reasons for, for not liking him. He seemed to be an up-and-up guy from the research that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. He's not a horrible politician. But uh, it's what's behind all these people making those decisions. It's just, you know, I've heard everything from the guy's a dictator. We can't work with him. He won't listen to what everybody says. That seems to be the general consensus. And that there's a real big push to change the party, much like the Reform Party changed the Conservative Party or the Progressive Conservative Party. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that they're hanging in because they want to bring it back, but it doesn't seem to be happening very quickly. So it's inside the party where there seems to be the biggest kerfuffle right now. And that probably or hopefully will be the downfall of Higgs. If you don't have, if you don't have, you know, you don't have to have a, 
everybody doesn't have to love you, but a majority of your party should. Yeah. He came very, very close just to losing his position. Yeah, just by one writing association. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things like picking his candidates rather than letting, you know, the different areas pick their own people, much less like the, the federal conservatives do. But uh, I don't know. I, I listened to his State of the Province speech. Right. And it was recycled. We're going to fix health care. We're going to fix transportation. We're going to fix this. We're going to fix that. They're giving 300 I can't remember, 300 odd dollars to, uh, I don't know if it's all low income, but it'll be end up being, you know, a good portion of the province is supposed to be getting this 300 some dollars and it was supposed to be fast. Now Higgs is holding it off. A of few course. of them are going to get it, but they might need the money for the election, he thinks. Well, didn't, didn't they just post a surplus of $375 million? Shh, don't talk about surpluses. That's, <laughs> you can't talk about surpluses. They have plans for that money. That's how they're going to fix everything. Oh, I see. And if, if memory serves, that, that was just for the most recent budget, but if memory serves, they have a stockpile of $2 billion. Is yeah. that correct? So yeah, a province true. with less than a million people has a surplus of $2.4 Yeah. But healthcare is a mess. Education is a mess. Homeless. People are starving. People. Yeah. Homeless is rampant, but they have two point four billion dollars. Yep. Somebody want to do the math on how much money every single citizen of the province could get? Away right no. before the election, he must be planning something. Something. It's the only thing I can think of. Suddenly, they're going to get a new highway somewhere. They've been wanting it, or a new hospital, or a whole bunch of new schools. I don't know, and there's mm. no hint as to really what they want to use it for. Hmm. Interesting. Because uh, I took a took a moment to listen to the speech, and in it, he's mentioning a whole list of accomplishments. Yes, and some of them are, you know, of course, you know, record spending in this, record spending in that, record spending in this, and this is a something I, I've mentioned often on the show, but I want to mention it again. Record spending in something is not an achievement. No, because in his speech, he's talking about how New Brunswick is growing. It's grown by 10% over a certain amount of time, population size. Inflation and population growth alone, if you're just maintaining things level, will bring you to record spending if you yeah. increase year over year. That's not an achievement. So what are you spending it on and what are you getting for it? So he's touting all this money that he spent. We spent 26% more on healthcare in the last five years and 27% more on it whatever the numbers are. But we're seeing the state of healthcare and we're seeing the state of education. We're seeing, you know, he said, I think he said we're spending 400% more on nurses. Well, I mean, if he's doing it Doug Ford style and paying three times the price for nurses from a private agency than he could get if they were just working for the public service. No I wonder think, you're spending 400% more on nurses. The healthcare system in New Brunswick, I think he's doing the same thing as what Ford's doing in Ontario. If I beat it down far enough, I'll have lots more private clinics. And it's that terrifies me. I'm hoping that, that people have their eyes open enough to see what that actually will mean five, 10, 15 years down the road. Well, yep. from Tina Yazdani, uh, Ontario Health Report finds uh, Ford government is giving unprecedented public money to private hospitals and clinics. Yeah. Funding is up 300%. The government is also paying more for surgeries at private clinics. Cataract surgeries cost an average 500 at public hospital versus 1200 at private. Yeah. But Doug, that's the thing, right? He's giving his money. He's giving our money to his friends, his donors. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm spending more on health care. Yeah, but you're not getting any more for it. You're just choosing to pay more and adding a fee to the middleman in the, in the process. This is where the opposition parties are falling down. They should be out there with numbers and this is what it's being spent on. They, they've, got, they've got all of that information and that's what should be made public. Absolutely. But most opposition Absolutely. parties, whether it be provincial, federal, it doesn't seem to make any difference, aren't doing their jobs anymore. They're doing a big PR campaign and uh, just talking about how much better they'd be in government than 
Trudeau because everything's his fault. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He mentioned his name a lot. Yeah. And which I was really that yesterday, and I know it's Trudeau's fault. It has to be. <laughs> but every every single thing that happens in Canada right now, yeah, it's his fault. Yeah, because that, that's the thing that I found surprising is that he's, for example, on green energy. He's not doing the Daniel Smith thing, saying you know we can't get to these targets before 2035. Daniel Smith brings her can't do attitude to everything. Says no, no, it has to. We have to wait till 2050. Everything else is unreasonable. He's following those things. He's talked about moving forward on childcare. He's, he's talking about all the same federal priorities and how great he's doing at them, and yet turns around in the next sentence and saying that. I mean, he even talked about his program for money for heat pumps provincially. Yes, which and is what the Fed. Atlantic Canada is winning big with that one. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. like, and then the federal government came in and matched that with carbon, you know, the three-year suspension on the carbon pro on carbon pricing for home heating fuel, and money for heat pumps. Yeah. And so, the priorities seem to be the same, and then he tells he talks about how well he's doing on those metrics. We don't know if that's true, but he's talking about how well he's doing on those metrics. And then in the next sentence says that Trudeau's destroyed everything, even yep. though they're the exact same priorities. It's all a big PR game now. You, you can't believe what you see anymore or hear, I guess. But hmm. All right, Mr. Grizzly, uh, I took about three minutes from uh, the state of the province. That's another weird thing, state of the province. I mean, there mm -hmm. seems to be this push to Americanize. Or yeah. I don't know if state of the province was a thing, but then we had Daniel Smith yesterday also sitting in front of her desk and addressing the, the province directly. The, and that's the, the second time she's America. done that now. Because I don't really, I don't remember ever in my lifetime premiers taking like an no. hour saying like, I'm going to address the, like, yeah, we don't all new. do that here. Like the prime minister doesn't even do that here yeah. unless there's like something like there's the throne super speech. major. There's a throne speech and that's it. Yeah, yeah, but like before the pandemic, though, or as the pandemic was kicking, I think the prime minister took an hour at one point. But it was like a once in a century pandemic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, and we were going to sh shut, you know, we were going to shut a lot of things down. But making this like this sort of like PR event that the, that they're doing is kind of, yeah, kind of weird. Um, Mr. Grizzly, I don't know if you have it set up. I do. I do. Okay. Uh, P and C bio coming in hot with the sarcasm. What's that? Trudeau gave me Trudeau gave 2005. 2005. That's how sneaky <laughs> he is. Uh, oh, and you could PC bio. I did see your uh, your thing about uh, a morning in Ontario. So I'm going to go listen to your set. Uh, Kits, if you don't know, Kit PNC bio uh, is a very, very, very good mixer. And uh, if you go to his uh, YouTube page, PNC bio, you'll find a whole bunch of musical mixes that you can really get down and dirty to. Oh, I got I got one for you too. That I got I got to. I'll send the link in the chat later. I've so there's a, I know this is really off topic just before we're about to look at some video, but you, you put my brain there and my squirrel brain has to go there. Jojo Lorenzo from Book Club Radio in New York City just dropped a remix of uh, Creed. And I can't get this song out of my head. It is wicked. Oh my God. I listen to it three or four times a day. I'm not joking. It's, it's unbelievable. I'll put a link in the chat in a bit there for everybody who wants to check it out. All right, let's uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, okay, I, I just want to introduce it. The, the video, the clip that I picked, um, shows three things. It shows a part part where he's listing some accomplishments, then showing some of the folksy type chat mm -hmm. that he was trying to insert every now and then, and then the big announcement was, "I'm going to try and buy your votes." Um, so we have it all together in about three minutes, the three of the main things. Um, let's do that, and we'll talk a little bit later about the, the announcement, the content, and the delivery. Yeah, it's about uh, three minutes uh, of, the, of the video, yeah. so we'll just bring this up. I'm going to put us all on mute here, and we'll, ju we'll just watch this. Affordability extends beyond energy. It's been a focus for our government since we took office. In fact, every single year, we have expanded supports for New Brunswickers and our most vulnerable. So I hope the point, and I've got a list to go through here, but the point that I want to emphasize is we have never spent more money as a government. We've never 
invested in every activity more than we have done in the last six years. And we've done it without raising your tax dollars. And that's the big difference. We have increased minimum wage. We've increased social assistance rates, reduced personal income tax and property tax, lifted the interest on provincial student loans, cut child care fees in half, invested in two rounds of emergency food and fuel benefits. We've helped social assistance clients keep more money while transitioning to work. Reduced harmful clawbacks. A single parent can now share housing costs, transportation, and even take a night shift knowing that the kids at home are being looked after and all without losing their benefits. And we just announced an increase to the low income seniors benefit by 50% tied to the cost of living in future years. We're reducing the burden on seniors who fund residential care for their partners to live more, in to leave more income with the individual living at home. And given the rising cost of food and the high poverty rates in some areas of the province, we know some kids are coming to school hungry. And that's why under our government, every school now has a food program. You know, I get real excited when I think about this, and my wife always tells me I need to smile more, so I'm really working on that. Um, so I'm going to try to smile more, and I know doing interviews, people say, well, you know, look, I'm green face, you could smile a little more. And, um, and it's hard when you're doing an interview because people are looking at you and you got, the, you know, the cameras on and you're trying to get the smile just right. <laughs> so, so I'm going to try to work on that. But I get pretty focused on issues, as you know, because I see such momentum. I see, I see a change of, of attitude across this nation about what's happening in New Brunswick. And the only people we really have to convince are the people in New Brunswick, because it's real. So to further help making ends meet, I'm pleased helping to make ends meet. I'm pleased to announce tonight an affordability measure targeting low-income working New Brunswickers. This is a one-time payment of $300 for families with a net income of $70,000 or less and could benefit around 250,000 families, an anticipated cost to the province of $75 million. We'll Trying to unmute everybody here. <laughs> One second. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Cassie, Cassie Lake asked me a question. Do I have the vibe that the public will be fed up with the poor performance? That's what I'm hearing. I, I don't talk to everybody, but, uh, I, but I do think people are tired of it. I get a real kick out of him the Trump impersonation there mm. he kind of goes off and starts, you know, his casual little conversation with the audience. And you're thinking, we've heard all this before. It's, and all of it is, is made up. I wish that this has ha had happened. I wish we had done these things, but they put it in the light of they have done them. Okay. So these are things that were announced, but not really followed through upon. Has he done anything for housing or for the the three hundred dollar that he's going to hold back now because of election mm -hmm. is coming? He thinks he can yeah. buy votes with it, right? Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. But if the election is scheduled for October, if he's not planning to go early, um, that's a little way early to announce that. Yeah, we well, got three hundred dollars coming. 11 that months was, from now, that if you happened, vote me happened in. happened last week. There was an attorney general, was, I had to write it down because I can't remember. Her name is Kimberly Pofferoth. Okay. Um, because of him last, I guess it was September, hinting that there's an election coming. Of course, elections in New Brunswick had to be ready. You can't right. start the day before. Well, it's caused over $1.7 million in spending. And she kind of scolded him about it. Like, you know, you kind of pretended you were going to have an election and then you haven't. And all that money is going to have to be spent again. They had to, you know, train the elections officers. They had to rent places. They had to set up phone systems, computer or internet systems, all that kind of stuff. And they pay for it as they go. They don't just pay for it if there's an election. Right. So there's several million dollars. And he still isn't clear if he's going to, you know, he still could, you know, pull an election off. 
between now and then. They're not, he's not really saying anything. Everybody's just on edge waiting. Hmm. And I think they're trying to keep people a little bit off balance, maybe. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, let's talk about his delivery. <laughs> you could uh, use some media training. Just a little. Is, I don't want to say is this his usual self. Um, At least he didn't play the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well first of all is this general his general standard for public speaking yep mm. okay um, but it's down home country there's no polished politician he just says what it is and okay folksy kind of stuff friends right. folks friends of folks folks yeah. of friends yeah yeah got some kids going <laughs> smiling really helped DeSantis <laughs> um, so here he is um, we know the overall context that he's sitting on 2.4 billion dollars and he's announcing 75 million dollars yeah to help someone has anybody sort of made that link about how little of that I mean if we're talking about doing the bare minimum to help there's no no press taking that and putting that in the overall context the press doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot of anything up there. I mean, they're reporting what's happening and what people are saying, but they're not digging in to find out why and how and when. So and no, no questions, no press conference. He's, they're just reporting what he said. So yeah. basically, I, I'm going to guess, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I'm going to guess that um, newspapers have been gutted to the point, and, and radio and television have been gutted to the point where they have only one person who's like a junior cub reporter and doesn't is, is deathly afraid to ask questions so they'll just regurgitate what was said instead of actually confronting and, and posing questions as a journalist would and i expect I, they don't have the money to send them to this city and that city and exactly but no it's a, it's a real it's a real shame it's a disservice to all of us and, and this is a good question from Dan. What does he say when people ask him why he's hoarding the money? Or do they ask him that? And it, was it uh, PM Godin said earlier that he's been, we've been waiting five years to find out what's going to happen with this money. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that's, that's absurd. There are people homeless. You could fix that. You have the money to build proper shelters. And what's he doing? Not a damn thing. Oh. Huh. But, and even the opposition. I mean, the Greens are challenging him to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but they're not getting reported on what they're saying is not making the papers. I don't know. I don't know if because politics is so bad or press is bad or is our press bad because, you know, which way did it go? Why is, why is all of this happening? Other than it's probably Trudeau's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's has he been asked why he's hoarding the money? He has, but I don't think there's ever actually been an answer. I'm trying to remember, but a couple of months ago, there was an article. I don't, I didn't bring it up today, so I don't have it to read. But uh, you know, it's kind of like you know, you got money in the bank, you're going to be okay. But I think it's they want at election time to be able to say, look what we've done. We've saved all this money. And, I know he made a big deal of paying uh, paying down two billion dollars of debt at the beginning of the speech as well. But which again, uh, big deal if your house is falling down just because you paid off your mortgage doesn't make your house any better. Exactly, and it does. He doesn't seem to be reinvesting the savings on on the interest. No. Into fixing the loans. Oh boy, yeah, Kajillion, this house, all the fields of Ontario prior to reelecting Dofo. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it really does. Uh, Kit Carpet Bomber, great sound effects this morning, guys. I don't know what you're talking about, so let, please let us know if there's some weird sounds coming. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, uh, we're getting away. a bit of a hum from uh, High Tide Hilda's uh, computer. I can hear it. That's okay. Oh. I can clean it up in post-production. Okay. Okay, great. Um, also, um, during uh, the speech, he did mention 
uh, stuff with regard to energy and indigenous communities and say that he was making a lot of headway with them and that almost all the projects, if not all of them, have some First Nations involvement. Is this something you know to be true? Uh, I know in all of the Maritimes they're working on that. I know in Nova Scotia, they're, this is a weird one, and I don't know if they're actually working with or around the, our, our native population. Um, mm. They want to put in a whole bunch of windmills all down the center of the province, groups of 20, and use the electricity that is made by those windmills to make green hydrogen. Okay. Then be put in a tanker and shipped to Germany. <laughs> We're helping to pay for it. There's no clear what happens if they break down, who has to fix it. Um, the land, they just want to take it, although that's a whole other nightmare. It looks like Northern Pulp is going to be owning, who owns, you know, mil owes millions of dollars to the government down here. But, so is it like Kushba Quack land grab all over again? I don't know. They're talking about needing 60, 60 feet, 60 meters. I can't remember which of a roads through to get to this. So that's going to mess stuff up. And I think New Brunswick's doing kind of the same thing, just trying to figure out how they can get stuff as cheaply as possible, not pay for mm. it, but have it done by private enterprise. Like, so, But they want to put it down the middle of the province. Now, I'm not a meteorologist or, or a... Or a geologist, but uh, wouldn't it make more sense to put it along the Gulf Coast, <laughs> where the wind blows a little bit more frequently? <laughs> I mean, the word, the word you use there, sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's lacking. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, if you look at Kingston as an example, <laughs> Wolf Island has, oh my goodness, I don't know how many windmills, and it's because there's prevailing winds there year round. It, it's one, it's, and it's it's a unique place on Earth. With prevail, the winds never stop in Kingston, right? And Wolf Island, they never stop, which is why they right. have so many windmills there. And I would think that you know, uh, I know that they've looked at doing um, Bay of Fundy. They tried to put um, a turbine in the bay. Oh, they've to, tried that a couple times. It's yeah. just a disaster. It just gets destroyed each time because the water is so powerful. They've not built anything strong enough to handle it. No, that water will pick up a boulder from the bottom and bring it almost up to the surface. Yeah, it's, it's that it's powerful. Yeah. Oh, and correct. But, You're but correct. I think uh, New Brunswick has, has great plans about getting power from Newfoundland, the same as Nova Scotia was going to be getting it. Like, there's all kinds of these things you hear them mention, but you don't hear them going into great deal, a great deal of detail about how it's going to happen or who's going to do it. Okay. Um, so he was talking when it comes to energy, something that we hear conservatives in Alberta talk a lot about, about how, you know, there's a whole market out there in Europe and the other places that, you know, we could be working to reduce using gas, yes. which is cleaner than certain forms, not the cleanest, but certain, certainly cleaner than coal. Uh, to go off and uh, to help fuel Europe and other places. But we also know that the time that it takes to actually permit a plant and build one and all the environmental regulations, let's say there's 30 years of oil left and this process takes 10 to 12, who's going to throw in all those billions of dollars to exploit something for maybe 15 years? Mm -hmm. That's assuming that they don't sign contracts with other nations in that time. Everybody keeps on talking about like, this is something we could have done yesterday, but we don't have the capacity because every, throughout Canada, every single drop of what it is that we pumped out of the ground is already used and spoken for. Yeah. And we haven't, it's not like we spent the last 25 or 30 years building refineries. No kidding. It's, it's like they want a product to sell. The wind isn't a product. The sun isn't a product. The water generation isn't a product, but hydrogen would be a product. Oil is a product. There's dollar signs attached to that, and they can control it, where you can't control wind, sun, water. So I don't know if that's what be, what's behind it or not, because we've certainly we've got the technology. Mm -hmm. If they can run the space station on solar panels, I don't know why they can't run my refrigerator on them. <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, <laughs> no, just, just stick your stuff outside in the snow. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's too much cream cheese in there, but you know, it's doable. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. That's good. I like it. That's good. Put down. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got lots of love there. <laughs> oh my word! Oh, I love it. Um, I'm seeing here in, in the news as well. Uh, in addition to, to Mike Holland leaving, uh, so did Arlene Dunn. Yep. Yeah. Um, there was I've got a list here somewhere. There is was way back, and I think it was 22 maybe. Dominic Har Hardy left. Yeah. Uh, then it was Arlene Dunn, uh, Trevor Holder, Dorothy, yeah, we Dorothy about Shepherd. Him. It was Dorothy Shepherd yep. said she couldn't, uh, I've got her quote here. She couldn't put up with his inflexible leadership and the changes on the policy on gender identity in schools. So that mm -hmm. really has, and I think a lot of them, like there are a lot of little tiny reasons that add up to the, to the one I'm leaving. Reason. Well, and she, yep. she really was visibly shaken when she talked about it she's like this is not this is not progressive this is not what we agreed on this is not what a government should be doing like she was deadly serious which yeah. i admire because it took a lot of courage to do what she did yeah. and and was unapologetic for it as as well she should be it's like no this is well, not i think it's it's embarrassing for, for it is well, it serve under them all of a sudden everything changes or you you know suddenly a, an issue comes up that's not really this isn't an issue it's it's a pretend issue yes exactly now one thing i noticed was missing from his state of the province he didn't seem to talk at all about anything that he's planning or doing for about transgender kids no, all that that kind of stuff that'll disappear up to the election. They'll have they'll have a reason not to talk about it. You just sweep it under the rug, right? Nobody's yeah. looking. But hopefully, the opposition parties kind of keep pounding on it. I don't know, but it's it's everything is aimed. It seems at everybody just getting sick of politics and and disinterested and not involved. And I won't bother voting and. He's counting on apathy, basically. Yeah, it's it's the old conservative trick, I think. Yeah. Hmm. And it works. Right. Sadly, it works. Hmm. Are there any other things that uh, you've spotted in the news that the uh, kids in New Brunswick should know, or even kids that you know were not there, not there, but because you know, New Brunswick doesn't get a lot of profile? No. Other than this, there's not a whole lot happening that I've seen. No. They're. Uh, it's, yeah. They're talking about weather-wise. They're talking about much, much higher chance of um, forest fires in the east again this year. So that'll be something that everybody will be looking forward to, and that's something that Higgs should be talking about and talking about how we're gonna. You know, we always, if there's a forest fire down here, we run out of money really, really fast, or it's really put a slam into our budget. So rather than prepare, most you know, like most governments, they just wait and see if there's a fire. <sighs> until, until the election, it's just going to be the same stuff, rehashed, rehashed, rehashed. That's not good. But so, but if the election's not until not, not until October, like, can he survive on that for ten months? It depends on how angry people get. I don't know. I, you, if you pay attention to the man, he mostly avoids. He's burying his face, like Polly ever. He, you don't mm -hmm. want to talk about it. You don't want to tell them what your policies are going to be because you don't have any. And I think it's it's just going to be, you know, avoid, avoid talking about stuff as much as you can. And they've had lots and lots and lots and lots of practice of doing that. Sadly. Yeah. So it depends on right. how angry people get, I think. Okay. And ear to the ground? How do you... People are frustrated. I think the... I talked to three different people last week. Um, Fredericton, St. John, and somewhere northern part and they all said oh they're all idiots they're all assholes like it's just frustration they just can't seem to get anything done or anything moving everything's a crisis everything has to be seen to right now but never gets seen to <sighs> yes 
and I don't know. I don't know if any of the parties are really prepared to fix much of it. You don't get a vibe from uh, the Liberals or the Greens that they're uh, they're ready to. Greens parties generally are pretty solid. Liberal party, they have they get good policies, but whether it happens is is another question. All right. So, uh, Mm, that's all, right. all we can do, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, hi, Ty Hilda. Thank you so much for coming in and keeping us up to date. Really do appreciate it. We really appreciate You're it. You're very welcome. Think of us on the weekend. Hopefully, we don't get too much rain. Yeah, no kidding. Yes. Are, are, is your house uh, pretty good when it comes to, for flooding, or yeah, are I you think at risk too? The problem is, is going to be these people that have five foot snow banks sitting outside their basement windows. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that's the bad water thing. Coming up from the river, it's going to be water melting down. So, I think I think we're okay. All right. If not, you'll hear about it. Okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> okay. let us know. Me. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you so much, my friend. Day, guys. You too. Bye bye. 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 Ah, there you go. High tide, Hilda, folks. You know her. You love her. Ah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you like my friend. <laughs> well, she's, she's uh, whip smart and and can disarm you because you know you, had, you just chat with her and realize, oh, what a what a what a lovely lady. And then you learn very quickly that um, nothing gets by her. She is on the ball and she knows what's happening. So, and she and, and, and she'll slide one in yeah. with that deadpan. Uh, you underestimate <laughs> her at your own peril. <laughs> ah kid j crick hilda is awesome we think so yes too. we do <laughs> we, we agree we agree absolutely yes. and when hilda was uh, speaking of wildfire season in new brunswick it seems that uh, that is also the case in alberta because yesterday i have a uh, the province of alberta declared already this is February. Yeah, February. Declared the the wildfire season has started. They, they have dozens. Now apparently, that's only two weeks of wildfire still burning. Yes, they're underground. Yep, yep. That's well. That's what we were talking about last September. Yeah. That we, you know, we were, they, they had fears that the fire had gotten so intense that they were still burning underground and that things would start up again. Like even if we had snow or whatnot, that still would not have been enough. It, it's a really bad situation. Uh, and and couple that with the drought that they're experiencing. Oof, it is not a good time to be in Alberta. Do you, did you see the numbers on inflation in Calgary? It's outrageous. Uh, yeah. yeah, Alberta had the highest in the country. In terms of the inflation numbers, Alberta is the one that did the worst. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. it's not good. And I was talking to my buddy in Calgary who I'm going to, I'm trying to, trying to line him up occasionally as a, 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 a um, correspondent as well. But it, you know, it's, it's 5 AM when we start the show in Calgary. So yes, it's a little early. <laughs> what yeah, I might do, do is maybe we, for that. yeah, we'll, we'll do some pre-record stuff. I think is, is the best way really, because I, I don't want somebody to start working at five in the morning. I mean, I, I get up at five, but that's my choice. Yeah. But when you were talking about the drought in Edmonton, there was, um, I'm not sure if this is related to the drought or just particularly with delivery, but in Edmonton uh, on January 30th, there was um, a ban on non-essential water use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, yeah. so yeah, it lasted only for a few days, but so I'm, that's probably more of a system uh, thing, but yes, there, there, there is drought we get back to that same question we asked a while ago, right? When people were saying, oh, you can't tell me that all these fires, you know, are naturally occurring or have anything to do with climate change. It has to be arson or whatnot. And it's like, yes, but why are all these fires catching? Drought, not enough rainfall, not enough snowfall, not enough. Yeah. Like, you know, things don't happen in a vacuum. They're linked to other things. Well, one of the things about Alberta is the boom and bust cycle. I mean, I got something here that somebody sent me. My buddy in Calgary sent me this uh, just yesterday. And let me just, uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> the 
problem in Alberta. I said, and I said to him, I said, maybe tying the economy to a single variable fluctuating commodity was a bad idea. He says, well, we're still small. We're like a town with one factory. As the population expands, the economy is diversifying. Tech and manufacturing now outweigh energy, but energy is still a large portion of the economy, kind of like how the government is large, but not a dominant part of Ottawa's economy. Another thing to note is that in spite of the wild economic swings, being tied to a single commodity has produced more wealth per capita than any other place in Canada. This is true. Even today, household income in Alberta outpaces the rest of the country by a long shot. Basically double Quebec. Not sure about Ontario, but I'll be, it'll be something like 25 to 35% higher. This is one of the reasons for inertia in diversifying. Nothing else has created as much economic value over the long or even medium term. Tech is changing this picture a bit, which is why Calgary now draws as much VC investment as larger, more established centers like Vancouver. Alberta's getting there, but it's it's got some work to do. It's got some work to do. And I, I feel for, uh, you know, people in Alberta. I really do. I have family and my best buddies out there. You know, they're, they're going through a rough time and they're going to need our help this summer. They really are because... Wildfire season has started in February, folks. It's still winter, but they have not ne received nearly the precipitation that they normally would have at this time of year. It's bad. Ugh. It's not getting better. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's, 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 it's really bad. Um, how much time do we have, Mr. Grizzly? Uh, a couple more minutes. Uh, shall, we, shall we discuss... Pierre Polyev and yes. what he stepped in yes, <laughs> or intentionally put his foot in his mouth. Yes. Uh, it, like, <laughs> which one, the going all in even more on the trans thing or well, the fact that he keeps on saying no to digital ID and then seems to be pushing digital ID. And, and let's, let's, uh, what about the, the one about, uh, that he sent out, uh, the, the tweet he sent out on the 18th of February that somehow slipped by me. And I'm just pulling it up here now. Where is it? Um, oh, yeah, here it is. This, this, this is the thing that I just, I'll put this on the screen because it's like, are you serious? I don't know how I missed this at the time. But check this out. This is, uh, Pierre Pauly have tweeted this on February 18th. Yes. Trudeau's radical environment minister's decision to end road building is part of a plan to deindustrialize and make us rely on foreign dictatorships to sell us the things our government bans us from making at home side to stop Trudeau's no more roads plan. All he's doing is getting your data so that they can hound you for funds if you actually click on that link. It, yeah. So, like, he, yeah. He just outright lied. Yeah. Yeah. Outright no more roads. lied. Yeah, outright lied. Um, I wish I had handy what it is the actual policy is so I could say how it is that he lied, uh, but I don't have it, so I'm, I'm sorry, kids. Um, well, you know, he, he's saying a decision to end road building, part of a plan to deindustrialize us. Yes. What well, is that, he talking yeah, that's about? Definitely, that's definitely a lie. That's total yes. bullshit. Yeah. Total yeah, absolutely. bullshit. Now, you see that um, uh, Pierre Polyev's uh, more, more recent trick is to add the word extreme or radical to everything. Yes. As I mean. if that makes it so. Um, yeah. Big whoop. Um, but yesterday in a press conference, uh, he uh, doubled down even more on the anti-trans stuff uh, by saying uh, that women's spaces should be for women only. So he's you know singling out transgender women as not being women. Mm -hmm. um, now, here's the thing. There is nothing wrong with women's only spaces. Just like there's nothing wrong with men's only spaces. There's nothing wrong with, how would I put it? You either have to do two things. You either have to decide that transgender men and women are men and women. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we keep it. We can we keep the, the binary system and we expand them to include transgendered men or transgender women. Or you have to then admit that there's more than two genders. Because two sexes. Yeah. What but that's what I'm saying. It's like then you have to say that there's male, female, and other. Mm -hmm. And then you have to build the infrastructure for them. 
if you're not going to let transgender women participate in sports, girl sports, then every sports federation out needs to create a transgender women league. Well, and fund it appropriately so that everybody can participate. You can't single them out. You can't say, oh, well, there's not enough demand, so sorry, we're not going to do it. You have to create it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have men, women, and transgender bathrooms. You're good. You, you, either, you either treat it like a third gender or sex mm -hmm. and build the infrastructure and all the programming around it, or you consider transgender men men, transgender women women, and you make it work within the system that you have now. But you can't have this middle that. ground where we're keeping the system binary but treating some people as other, as in you don't fit in another group, and sorry, we have nothing for you. So here's something that Jay Kirk put in the chat. Cons aren't ready for unisex bathrooms. And you know what? It, I've, I've experienced uh, gender neutral or unisex, whatever you want to call it, bathrooms. Toilets, because that's what they are. They're not bathrooms, they're toilets. And here's the best part of it. So... You know right now if you go into a men's washroom or a men's toilet or a restroom, whatever label you want to put on it, it's a toilet. You go into the stall and, and the stall starts at about, what, 20 inches? And, and when you stand up, you could actually see into the next stall if you're tall like I am. I've never cared for that. You have no privacy, really. You don't. Whereas in a gender neutral or unisex or gender free, whatever you want to call it, you have your own private water closet. It's walls that go floor to ceiling and a door that goes floor to ceiling. And when you close it, you're in there by yourself to do your business. They have those all over France. And I've seen them in government buildings in Ottawa. Or let me rephrase that. I've seen them in buildings where government offices are. Because they're not actually government buildings. They're owned by the private sector, the buildings are. And I've seen it. And you know what? I like it. Because you have total privacy. You come out and there's a giant sink and you just wash your hands and you be on your way. I've seen it in restaurants in this city and more and more bars and restaurants are doing the same thing as, as you can attest to at the lieutenant's pump. They're toilets. You go in, you have a toilet, you have a sink, you have a door, you close it, you're complete privacy on your own. You know how much more comfortable that is for everybody now, imagine if you're a trans person and you're beginning your transition. Wouldn't you be more comfortable with using something like that? Because I already am more comfortable with it, and I'm very much a dude. I, let me rephrase that. Very much a man. Because dude, be, dude is a person, place, or thing these days, really. It doesn't apply to men. Right? <laughs> like, I, I get angry at my computer, and I look at it sometimes and go, dude. So, <laughs> yeah, really. Right? Uh, Yes, no, no, it's true. <laughs> I do that too. Now, here, here's the thing. Um, when we, for some reason, there's an obsession with bathrooms. Yes. Right? And, and I've made the, the comment before, they're always, 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 always talking about your little girls mm -hmm. being attacked by transsexual women in bathrooms, but they're never worried about your little boys being attacked. They never talk about it the other way. Now, I here's the thing. to that too. Um, you may have heard the news. It's not here in Canada, but in, in the United States, in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. there's a non-binary teen. Non-binary teen. This, who was killed in a high school bathroom. Max Benedict was their name. Yes. And then yesterday... Uh, thanks to uh, an account called at Dakota underscore Burgin, B-U-R-G-I-N, uh, pointed out a 2019 Harvard survey that says, researchers looked at data from a survey of nearly 3,007 U.S. teens aged 13 to 17. The study found that 36% of transgender or gender non-barrier students with restricted bathroom or locker access reported being sexually assaulted in the last 12 months, according to a May 6, 2019 CNN article. Of all students surveyed, one out of every four or 25.9% reported being a victim of sexual assault in the past year. So that's a lot of teens getting sexual assault at yeah. 26% over the past year in that year. But for transgender kids, it's 36%. So 93% 
and it found that 93% of perpetrators of sexual violence were the victims or children or children's or teens are family members or acquaintances, not people in public washrooms. <laughs> PNC Bio's comment on screen. Yeah, well, well I'll, I'll read it in later because I, I don't want no, to laugh during I'm this sorry. particular segment. Sorry. It does not come across well. No. <laughs> um, but it would seem that for all the um, satanic panic mm -hmm. trying to be raised mm -hmm. about transgender people being the perpetrators of sexual assaults in bathrooms, uh, the facts seem to reveal that it's way more likely that they're actually going to be the victims of it. Well, well here's there's a couple of points. Because if you, the, here's a point before you get there. If you force a transgender woman who's out in the street and presenting as female mm -hmm. to go into a public male bathroom, right. what are the odds that person gets bashed rather than the odds that that person is there to prey upon a child? In, in all honesty, um, what's more likely? It depends on, on the, the situation. And I have to say that because there's nuance to it. And I say that because I have many times uh, been in a pub or at a concert or at a, at a hockey game and the lineup for the women's washroom is like insane and somebody's just doing the pee dance right they're they, and they don't want to soil themselves i get it and i've seen them run right into the men's room and the men just turn and look and go yeah whatever you just gotta pee nobody cares nobody cares men yeah. as a as a general rule don't give a damn and the first and person been... who made a fuss everybody would turn and go grow up and if you've ever been into a gay bar, oh yeah, that's they're, they're gender they're neutral. Period. Gay bar. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's like, yeah, it's just, yeah, they're too completely yeah. gender neutral. Yeah, so you got some people like, and hey, in in high school, mm -hmm. I remember one time I went. I really had to go. I was not doing the pee pee dance. I was doing the poopy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because and I went to the bathroom. All the things were were full. Mm -hmm. I had to go, and I just like walked right into the girl's house, and I said, "Put my hands up." Sorry, we've got to go. And I walked right into a style, and I went because the option, the alternative, soiling, pooping your pants. Yeah. You don't want to soil in high yourself. school, yeah, especially not You'd in high school. You never live that down, never. <laughs> so, well, what so, I was going to say earlier, something that conservatives should take into consideration with gender-neutral toilets is um, the cost savings, tremendous cost savings on plumbing. Tremendous cost savings on fixtures, tremendous cost savings on water usage, because you're not building two sets of toilets, you're building one, one sink, one big, you know, trough sink, if you will. Usually that's the yes. case or multiple sinks, but you know, uh, and, and all these separate toilets, no urinals and people, what, what I, I heard from a friend of mine who works in one of these buildings, spoke to facilities and facilities said, gender neutral toilets tend to be. Uh, require less cleanup because there's usually men and women standing there waiting to get into a private stall. And guess what? You come out and you've made a filthy mess. We know you did it. Yes. We know you did it. So people yes. tend to be a little bit more clean about doing their business. Uh, trust me. Yes. I, I much prefer a private stall. I do. Me too. And, and you know me, I'm not bashful. Everybody's seen me naked, but there's some things I like to do in complete privacy. That's one yes. of them. <laughs> yes. Well, when a seated position, that is. Standing, I don't care. Yes. Doesn't, I'll write my name in the snow. I don't care. But when it comes to a seated uh, moment in a, in a toilet environment, I like complete privacy. Complete privacy. Yes. And I don't yes. think I'm strange when it comes to that. And on there are certain days I'd be okay with them making them somewhat soundproof too. Just saying. <laughs> there are times you're going, please don't make that noise. <laughs> oh man, yes, the Japanese rule the toilet game. Really absolutely. Do. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My beaver sweetie was telling me about that. The three three months he spent in Japan, these things that are like completely contained and whatnot and you go in and then it just like washes down yeah. and sprays the whole like it's brilliant oh my god yes eliminate urinals make all washroom stalls would that help yes yes, yes. Yeah. and 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 kit uh Gade here uh pm Gade, 
in New Brunswick having young kids, I had to go to the ladies' bathroom so many times to have access to a changing table. Yes, because they're not putting them in the men's bathroom. Like this, as if there's no such thing as single yeah, fathers. Exactly. Or not even single fathers, just fathers who happen to be out with their child. This, you can still be married and your spouse is running one errand somewhere else and you're somewhere else with your kid. Like, oops, I need to, I need a change table. Oh, Mohan's hit this one right out of the park. You need ID to prove you can use the toilet. <laughs> well, and, and you know, here's, so Lefty Lance, you can have gender neutral uh, toilets with urinals as well. Yeah, you, you can. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you could. Nothing stops you from putting some on the yeah. wall. I mean, look, you go to, a, and I know, I know you've seen this probably at Blues Fest where they have the, a triangle, literally. So they have at, at, at festivals, they have lineups of go huts, right? Lots of them. Right. But they always have a, an area in the back where there's a giant trough, but they've started to put what they call a triangle and it's literally, or it might be four. I'm not sure how many, how many, uh, literally you stand up, your back is to people. It could be right in the middle of the field and you do your business right there. Your urinals yeah. and, and they're out in the open. Like it's, there's no privacy whatsoever. And again, when it comes to having to pee, most men don't give a damn. No, <laughs> just don't care. Just, no. I just want to let it go. I'll let it go wherever. If I'm desperate enough, it's right. There's going to be the spot. Cause I ain't sunning myself. Yep. Just sh show me to the back of the building. Yeah. <laughs> Find me the biggest tree. <laughs> yes, and they have those family bathrooms sometimes too as well. Exactly. So I mean, these are not accommodations that are hard to make, but the general overall point is that, you know, unless you are going to create, and, and they're talking about things like, for example, with, with swimming, right? Like we should have a men's category, a women's category, and an open category. Mm -hmm. It's like, why, why would anybody who is cisgender, male or female, compete in the open category especially if you're in competition that's supposed to lead somewhere else if competing in the open category won't qualify you Good. Oh, hold on a second i will be right with you if you could feel the time it's time for a little bit of love oh, okay so a friend of mine just sent me uh well sirens here i don't know if you can hear them or not in the background um a friend of mine uh, just sent me a commentary about this and it's, wow, it's kind of crazy. Um, my friend Janet sent me this. She says, my friend and I were texting last night. She came out four years ago. She's 51. And this is, uh, oh, going off screen. Wow. Five or six years requ requesting hormone replacement therapy. Oh boy. Try that again, Paul. After five or six years, we requesting hormone replacement therapy, taking hormones for a year to apply for surgery, waiting for application process, waiting for surgery, all the blood work. We do all this so we can creep in the women's restroom. Did you see PP's thing now? He wants to ban trans women from women's spaces. I sure hope he doesn't win the next election. He and Daniel Smith need to move out of Canada. I think this stems from the yahoos who protested in Ottawa. You are correct. And that's the bizarreness of it all. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, not safe for work content. Just a little, just a, just, just, just a bit of snuggles. My uh, beaver sweetie is going on a very, very, very hard-earned vacation uh, this week. And I cannot go with him because we are two weeks from opening in a play. And uh, so... Um, that may be the last time we see each other before he comes back. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to get in a couple of a couple of swooches and cuddles to to fill up the tank. I've got I've got something for you, and then we'll have to wrap up. But I got to show you this. This is from David Mosscrop, and there's a there's a thread with this. So this is uh, David Mosscrop, our friend. Um, conservatives don't want kids watching porn. They'd much rather they spend quality time with their parents occupying uh, Ottawa and trying to overthrow the government. Which, you know, and Eva yeah. Chipyuk, the dumbest lawyer in Canada, yes. puts writer in quotes for Globe and Mail. Perhaps a more appropriate title would be instigator of hate, division, anger, gaslighting, more anger, outrage, fear, and finally more anger. Did I miss anything? Your pills this morning? Of course, David. Thanks for the boost. 
Yes. I'm also an Aquarius. <laughs> She's the dumbest lawyer in Canada. But see, again, we're being attacked. We're under siege. These people are instigating hate and dividing us in one. It's like, again, this. Have, have you smelled yourself? Of course not. No, no. Seriously. Oh, these people. I'm so, t- you know, it's. I, I re-listened to Creek Peak's video yesterday and said, I'm so tired of the incessant whining. Yes. Yeah. It's exhausting. Just, fuck. I wish we, we could have like a, a national collective box of Snickers. Just like, just whenever they start yapping, just like shove one in their mouth and chew on this for a while. <laughs> All right, uh, Kits, uh, is it your imagination or is that beaver glowing, says Kit Lefty Lance. Yeah, that, that's beaver glowing. It's been 11 <laughs> years and I'm a spitting kitten. I love that man. <laughs> I really love that man. Oh, oh, and by the way, he also got some great news. It looks like he's got a space to go back into the lab to do more research. Oh, awesome. It looks like he's managed to find some funding and uh, professor because his supervising professor is now retired. So he needs to associate with someone else because apparently when you're working with chemicals in a lab, you need insurance. Yes, yes you do. So you need somebody to hire you to make sure that you have the insurance <laughs> because things can go boom. We don't want some. Especially lithium batteries because you know when lithium is exposed to air, it uh, yeah, goes up in flames. Catches fire. Yeah. <laughs> ah. All right. Okay. Kids and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. And we love it when High Tide Hilda shows up. And we know you love it too. So I'm so happy that we were able to do this for you because sharing is caring. Please, 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 please tell your peeps and poops all about us because word of mouth is priceless. And you have the mouse from which we want the word to come. If you would like to not miss an episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. And uh, yes, I did, uh, Ray Girl, if you happen to be watching, uh, I saw your, your post on Facebook telling me that, uh, you know, oh, by the way, I'm you. And I had figured that out based on the tips. So, but uh, thank you so much for, uh, for waving and saying hello. Um, because the Ray Girl sponsored our pod page. So if you're listening, you go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when you get there, you can click subscribe. And that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it'll come directly to you. Or if you're watching, you can scan that QR code that Mr. Grizzly just made appear under my chin. If you would like to help us in other ways, ah, Kit Elaine, you're always right on time. I love it. Have a beyond awesome day, everyone, and remember to smash that button before you leave. Yes, go to our YouTube page if you're not there already, and we have three buttons for you. Like, share, and subscribe. Click on them, one, two, or three. Leave a comment. we love to hear from you. So let us know what you think. Um, we appreciate it. And uh, Kit Kendra, uh, I did see your comments. Um, Thank you, and uh, what you had to say has been uh, taken uh, into account. Uh, we do hope uh, that you do come to the chat uh, a little more regularly. Um, we had some comments based on some of the interactions yesterday, and there's some people that are uh, have felt that it's they maybe don't want to spend time in the chat because you know, being attacked, being attacked. Um, we try to encourage people not to do that, not first assume, first assume the worst of other people's intents on the chat. So um, like we said yesterday, please be kind to and gentle with each other, with yourselves, but kind and gentle with each other on the chat. We're trying to create one little corner somewhere on the internet where we can have rational discussion without, uh, you know, first assuming the worst of everyone else. Um, no hate. No hate. No hate. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Lick sub and share. Lick sub and share the beaver. <laughs> Good song. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, uh, the QR code that Mister Grizzly has just switched over in the top hand corner brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee k o hyphen f i dot com slash eager beaver lowercase letters all in one word. 
shirt. <laughs> Kid Michael, a coworker, just saw me lick my butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I love it. I love that man. <laughs> lick all the buttons. Oh, man. <laughs> lick all the buttons. Uh, so, yes, uh, I, I think I said it, but I'll repeat it just in case. Coffee, K O hyphen F I dot. <laughs> <laughs> com slash eager beaver lowercase letters all in one words you're doing it to me kids again <laughs> we can be giggle as we sign off uh and or scan the qr code on mr grizzly's head and there you can make a donation to the beaver lodge emergency hydration fund to keep us going and to keep our vocal cords moist thank you so very much from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver state. <laughs> That's okay, my friend. It's okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a good laugh. <laughs> no need to apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> it can be a tough world out there. So please, please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, uh, some words of wisdom, please. You know, uh, here's the thing. I'm going to try and be as succinct with this as I can. For those of you who are concerned about the current state of our nation, and I know many of you are, I am. I'm one of these individuals who is worried about the future of our country. We're worried about the rage farming and rage baiting and lies that politicians get away with. And not little white lies, but gigantic whoppers that are easily disproven with the quickest of Google searches. If you're concerned about that, well... Here's what you can do. You can put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and print the letter out. Drop it in an envelope. No postage required. Send it to your member of parliament and let them know what your thoughts are about the current state of the nation and how things are going and, and how, if you feel like we do, that Pierre Polyev is a danger to Canada, a danger to our sacred democracy, and a danger to marginalized individuals, let it be known. Let them know. Oh, yeah. And if you're like me, a cis het white male, it is incumbent upon you. It is your duty to stand up, take note, and say no. No. Because we don't want to be standing ready. by and let it happen and say, they came for the trade unionists, and I wasn't a trade union unionist, so I said nothing. No. Stand up. Make noise. Be counted. And let parliament know you are not happy with the way things are going yes don't be one of those good people who chose to do nothing exactly all it takes for evil to um triumph is for good people to do nothing that's it that's it that's it all right um mr grizzly roll the credits please <laughs> You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right. Um, I don't really have much for an Easter egg today, to be totally honest, kids. I don't know if you have anything, Mr. Grizzly. But uh, just wanted to let you know that, um, because you don't even know this, Mr. Grizzly, uh, tomorrow I will be uh, broadcasting from the other Beaver Lodge, the Ottawa Beaver Lodge. Oh. So I'll either be zooming in or if I wake up early enough, if you would like that, I might actually come in to keep you company. That's a possibility. Well, tomorrow is uh, tomorrow's Friday, right? Friday show. Yeah, so I work from home tomorrow. Bridget will be here tomorrow because um, uh, I have a, an appointment. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could probably do something. Huh? Let me know. Let me know. Okie dokie. Um, the only thing I have for you 
is uh, this image here from Michael Deatter, uh, which <laughs> was about uh, the snowstorm because it's not going to apply to the rain, but uh, visit beautiful Nova Scotia. <laughs> And there's four postcards from Mahone Bay, Lunenburg, New Glasgow, and Cape Breton, and it's basically giant snowbanks. No, <laughs> I have one quick image to share, and then uh, I got to go because I'm going to be late. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, Cor Corrigan, I don't know who Corrigan is. I don't. Uh, I'd love to be able to give them the credit for this. Whoever the um, individual is who created this uh, political cartoon, but it has the media to the left, and in the middle, it's got a Trump playbook on a lectern. And Pierre Polyev is strapped to Donald Trump like a baby and swearing and yelling and shaking his fist. For those of you who are Patrick. listening, Patrick Corrigan? Patrick Corrigan, yes. Okay, well, thanks to Patrick Corrigan because that's a brilliant, brilliant little piece of art. Okay, I got to go. All right. I will uh, Bye, everyone. I'll see you later.